Hello friends, how are you? My name is Corbin Reed and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm actually coming to you from Disneyland. Um, I wanted to get this video up on Sunday, so I just decided to do a quick intro to let you know that today I'm working on part one of my movie room makeover, which is a full room board and batten treatment on the wall. Um, it's beautiful, it envelopes the room, it gives it a really traditional, rich, warm feel by adding the thickness to the wall with the wood and the base cap molding inside of it. Um, it's kind of like a traditional wainscoting look, but it's actually going all the way up the wall. And then I get to paint it a really beautiful color. So that is all I do in part one, but it creates this incredible transformation from this boring, bland loft space uh, and creates this very intentional warm space that you want to just cozy up and watch a movie in. Part two of this, I'll be adding curtains, lighting, decor, all of that. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the full reveal. And if that sounds interesting to you, please just keep on watching because part one is really exciting and the room really comes to life. So for the before, this room was just boring builder grade. That's an old couch that was a hand-me-down um, in that first photo. And then this is the furniture that was up here before the loft makeover. A lot of this stays, but a lot of it changes. Again, this is just sort of a decor band-aid. Um, me just using a bunch of like things that I think look good to try and add personality to the space. But this whole transformation is about making everything cozier. So I always start out with a drawing um, of the measurements and everything and then the tools I use for this for what you saw there these one by three primed pine boards a pencil tape measure um, and a leveler and that's all you need to trace the stencil on the wall with the measurements that you have so that you can just then go make your cuts and apply those stencils to the wall almost like you're just sticking on a pattern on the wall so that's the prep draw everything out on a piece of paper, sketch it up with all your measurements, and then go make your cuts. Um, and also stencil everything out on the wall with a pencil. And when you're stenciling it out, you also wanna make sure the lines are level. It just saves you time in the end, especially if you're applying this wall treatment by yourself. It saves you time from having to sit there with the leveler and try to level each board and measure in between each board to make sure it's at the right width. And um, it's just a lot. So another thing that's really important is you want to make sure that you mark the boards. So I had a bunch of different cuts and the boards all kind of look the same when they're stacked up and sometimes they get mixed up when you're in the process of applying everything. So if you need a board that's a bunch that are 36 inches and you have a bunch that are 24 or whatever, just take a pencil and write 24 inches on each board as you're cutting it. That way, when it comes time to apply all of it, none of them get mixed up or wasted or anything like that. I mentioned before the application process is super easy if you start with a stencil. I am just basically putting these pre-cut boards that I pre-measured in there with liquid nails, rad nailer, and just applying them in these little stencils that I drew out. Um, it's kind of hard to see but you can see the pencil lines faintly on the wall and it makes the process go super quick. Honestly the prep takes the longest so just be sure to do those steps. Um, patient part, this is just a breeze, really. But I wrapped this treatment all the way around the room. Um, this is just the right side of the wall where the sliders are. And then the TV wall, I did it halfway up. I did a wainscoting. And then I'll be adding wallpaper to the top half of, of the TV wall, which you'll see here shortly but this is just me applying it to one side of the room. No accent walls allowed. This is a full room treatment. I had to do some specialty cuts around outlets um, and you can just sort of do those as you go. I kept my miter saw nearby because I happen to have a porch outside that I can cut on. Um, so that's what I did so I could make these specialty cuts.
And as I mentioned before, this is the TV wall. So I'm only going halfway up the wall here because I wanted to leave room for a little bit of variation and texture. I end up doing, you'll see in part two, a really cool wallpaper, peel and stick wallpaper, a vinyl wallpaper on the top half of the wall. And it just adds to the warmth of the entire space. So um, for the TV wall, I will be doing these one by three pine boards with the base cap molding in in there which you'll see shortly and then I also ended up adding some corbels um, and a little ledge to the top of that wainscoting shelf there underneath the TV uh, to have a little shelf which is um, something that I also use for styling and decor and then this is the third wall here um, there are only three walls in this room and because like I showed you in the beginning this is a loft so the back is open and because I have so much light in my living room um, in part two, I'll be showing you how I close that in with some curtains. And there's my dog, just always nearby watching me tear the house apart once again, silently, judging, worrying. <laughs> And then here I just wanted to show you how I wrapped this into the wall with the sliders just to really complete the look. I just wrapped the one by threes around the wall there. And then next up, once I had all of those one by threes applied to the wall, um, I am cutting down this base cap molding. This is a vinyl base cap molding. I'm cutting this down so I can insert them into these boxes that I created on the wall out of the board and batten. Um, it's just going to add depth and it's a very traditional look, um, but I just think it adds more dimension and more interest and looks more traditional instead of modern. Morning, y'all. So I'm already covered in sawdust. I've been cutting. My neighbors probably hate me because it's 7.30 in the morning. I just want to get this done and my brain is like best. There's a lot of measuring I have to do um, to put the, the base cap molding. I'm using a vinyl, I am using a vinyl base cap molding um, for this project and it's different from what I've used for picture frame molding so I just wanted to come on here and explain. Um, first of all, it's not wood, so it's a lot easier to cut. It's more malleable, um, so if you do make a mistake, you can kind of shove it in there. It doesn't have to be as exact with the cuts. So because I'm placing it inside of a very rigid structure, these pine boards are hard. They are not flexible. They're already on the wall. It just makes it easier if you make a mistake to sort of adjust it and shove it in there. So it's going to give it this really nice sort of textured depth look um, to the wall. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it. I So I'm outside right now just making cuts. I wanna get it done so that I can move on to caulking and I have a lot of wood filling I have to do with all these seams. I tried to cut the pine boards to leave like as many long pieces as I could. Um, so like I use a lot of 96 inch boards because I have long walls up here. This is definitely the biggest molding project I've ever done. Um, but I tried to make it so I have as few seams as possible, but it's still gonna be a lot of work. So this project is definitely something, if you're doing as many walls as I am, like I'm not just doing an accent wall, I'm like very heavily against accent walls. I wanna be enveloped in a look, not just like have a fragment of it. So. It means more work, but it also means higher impact. Um, anyways, yeah, just wanted to tell you what I'm up to. Measuring, cutting, the base cap molding. Um, that is, sorry, I said vinyl. It is vinyl on the outside, but I think it's technically... PVC? No, it's vinyl. I'm gonna have to prime it. I can't paint it the way you can just paint wood, but it's a lot more forgiving, easier to cut and easier to adjust so I won't have to hopefully um, do as much like recutting and adjusting in terms of like if I make a mistake or it's too long. Too short is kind of an issue but too long is easier to fix. So that's it. That's what I'm up to. I will show you guys when I'm like putting everything up. 
So these are the paint samples that I tried out. I tried out seven of them. They're very hard to see, but there are different variations, different shades of white. Some are more yellow, some are more gray. I was trying to find the perfect grayish tone, and I think that I found it. I ended up going with number three. It's called Silk Chamois, A Soft Chamois by Benjamin Moore. Um, I highly recommend it. I love the way it reflects the light and this is a color that I have used all over my house. I also did this wall treatment in my kitchen makeover video. Uh, I eventually want to wrap it all the way around my living room and up the stairs to the loft here. Um, it's just a very tedious and expensive process so I'm doing it room by room but I really think that it the loft is right above the kitchen, so I think if I can connect it by the stairwell and the wall that wraps to the stairwell, uh, it'll just feel like it's leading you up to the loft and it will all feel like it's connected even though there's stairs between them. Um, so that's something that I want to do in 2024. But as, I'm, as I already explained to you guys, this is just me applying the base cap molding in between here. You, you can see it sort of filling out, adding dimension with the liquid nails, brad nails, it's the exact same process. Essentially, the only difference is um, I'm doing basically picture frame molding inside of the one by threes. And this is what it is looking like once I've added all of the base cap molding. This is the full board and batten look. Um, so since I've already chosen my paint color, which is that soft chamois by Benjamin Moore, as I mentioned before, the only thing I have to do before paint is fill any of these holes that I have on the wall from things that I had hanging before, like decor and light fixtures. Here's a little celebratory moment. I was so excited with the texture and the look that this added. And honestly, just proud of myself because this is the biggest molding project I've ever done. Next up is just, I sanded everything. I caulked, wood filled all the holes. I highly recommend using, um, spackling on the joints between the one by threes instead of wood filler. Uh, it just makes a big difference. Then I really just went in with the paint. I did not need to prime. Um, and it's a little bit hard to tell how big of a difference it makes until the end. But you know, I taped everything off and painted. And that was basically it. And this is the final look. You can really see how the warm white comes out once it's dry. And it just immediately feels like a space that has purpose and intention and warmth. And once I add the lighting and that, there's the shelf too with the picture ledge and the corbels. I didn't show that. You basically just nail it and liquid nail it and brad nail it the same way I did everything else. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming uploads. And of course, part two of this movie room makeover with the full reveal. And uh, be sure to follow me over at Instagram, on Instagram at storydesign underscore with Corbin Reed. Share more minutes minute updates over there and stories on my DIYs and my makeovers and my projects and inspo and all of that. So thank you all so much for tuning into today's video and I will see you in the next one.